Surprisingly, the new trailer for the 2024 convention declared the good news contains an object that doesn't look that it belongs there. Can you spot it? Good news is needed now more than ever. The good news we need is not of human origin. It originates with the giver of real hope, Jehovah God. And it centers on his son, Jesus Christ. What is this good news? Can we trust it? And can it help people right now? This year's Declare the Good News Convention of Jehovah's Witnesses will bolster confidence in God and His Son. The good news of God's kingdom will help you to cope with life now and prepare you for eternal life in the future. Now that is good news. If that wasn't obvious, let me play that in slow motion for the second time, but the interesting part. Can you see the devil's horns on the stand, on the wall, on the right hand side of the couple? Is that something that the Christian organization will use to attract worldly people to Christian, supposedly Christian assembly? Now a little background on this particular depiction. The devil's horns gesture goes back in history, but it has been in recent decades be associated with rock artists such as Black Sabbath, uh, Dio, Coven and the Beatles. I found the following quotation in relation to John Lennon and the use of the gesture very interesting. In 1966, the Beatles released the single Yellow Submarine, which is a very well-known song, with Eleanor Rigby. The cover features John Lennon making a hand sign similar to today's version of the Devil's Horns. Now, his, his thumbs he, thumb is out and, the, and rather than his palm, the back of his hand is facing forward. In January 1969, the Beatles released the full album, album Yellow Submarine, a soundtrack to the 1968 animated film. Now, the cartoon illustration of John Lennon is making the sign of the horns as we know it today. Thumb in, palm out. There is no definitive explanation for what Lennon meant by the sign. The most common specul speculation is that it signalled an interest in Alistair Crowley, an infamous early 1900s black mag magic practitioner who at one time called himself Baphomet, an occult figure idolised as a horned half-man, half-goat. In that light, the hand sign would represent a goat, or a ram's head. Now Crowley appears on the cover of the Beatles album 1967, St. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, and albeit I haven't come across a Crowley gesture similar to the one John Lennon used, but this photo is the nearest I came across to him doing the devil horns with both his hands. Now here is the thing. There have been rumors circulating the watchtower and their use of subliminal images in their publications and here are some obvious examples this one is the thief's bag just so happens to have in it a pendant of the all seeing eye of horus one of the most common occult symbols this is not really a subliminal image it is odd though that the watchtower would stick an image of the Illuminati's logo, the all-seeing eye of Horus, in the bag of loot that the thief is making off with. It is quite obvious. Now here's a normal Jehovah's Witness family. Uh, they keep a framed picture of their pet ram on the end of the table. Ram's heads and goat-headed figures are camouflaged in many Watt Tower graphics, but 
this one this one is not even disguised it is blatant so notice the picture on the lamp table how many homes have you been in where people display framed portraits of ram ram heads interestingly the bible speaks of goat shaped demons evidently that is how the demons depict themselves some might be inclined to dismiss these examples presented however my personal conclusion is that they are real and that the watchtower society has probably been infiltrated by a secret coven of devil worshippers evidenced not only by the subliminal imagery but also by such things as the society's irrational attachment to 1914 the hypocritical ngo affair with the united nations and their lying denying all of it as well as their callous refusal to accept any responsibility to protect the children in the congregation from uh, csa predators the list is endless and maybe on another video we can list all the subliminal images that have been found during the decades in the watchtower magazines but uh, as i said this is not uh, a subliminal image we're dealing here today we're talking about it is an actual object that was part of the set for the upcoming 2024 convention and undoubtedly millions of jehovah's witnesses and non jehovah's witnesses will get to see it right how can that possibly be to say that someone just sneaked that object on the set in secret is just laughable consider this Many times in the past, the Watchtower has shown us what is happening behind the scenes. Uh, there is always a crew for us, for every aspect of every video uploaded on JW.org. A crew that creates the set, a crew that films the set, the many actors involved, uh, a crew that edits the video and a crew that uploads these videos on the website. Do you mean to say that all these people fail to see what is very well a very well known symbol in modern culture and the implication on having such a symbol on set i can't believe that for a minute uh, i uploaded this trailer of the convention only a few days ago and most of my viewers spotted this symbol straight away so and these were t we are all on trained eyes never mind the trained eyes of the watchtower and that editing department so is it more likely somebody who operates above all these aforementioned uh, departments put it there and made it made everyone to accept the fact that it will remain in that set despite any objection i'm more inclined to go with the second version what do you think let me know in the comment section but here is the thing regardless of what you think you and i think the God of the Bible anticipates secret societies taking over religions or organizations that profess to worship, uh, worship him and utilizing them as a vehicle to hide the dark satanic agendas. You don't believe me? Here's the account from the book of Ezekiel in chapter 8 and verses 6 to 11 to 12. It says there, and he said to me, son of man, do you see what terrible detestable things the house of Israel is doing here? Things that make me go far away from my sanctuary. But you will see detestable things that are even more terrible. Then he brought me to the entrance of this courtyard. And when I looked, I saw a hole in the wall. God actually dug a hole in the wall. He said to me, son of God, please bore through the wall. So I borrowed through the wall and I saw an entryway. He said to me, go in and see the evil, detestable things that they are doing here. So I went in and looked and I saw all sorts of images of creeping things and loathsome beasts and all the disgusting idols of the house of Israel. They were carved on the wall all around. All 70 of the elders of the house of Israel were standing before them uh, with Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, standing among them. Each one had his censer in his hand, and the perfumed cloud of incense was also ascending. He said to me, Son of man, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness? Each one 
in the inner rooms where his idols are displayed for they are saying Jehovah is not seeing us Jehovah has left the land so here's the thing based on this account from 3000 years ago is it too far-fetched to believe that in the higher tiers of the Watchtower Society uh, there is a group of men with power that would like to engage uh, unwillingly the millions of low-ranked Jehovah's Witness and worldly people who watch this video in practices that, as the verse says, makes Jehovah distance himself from his sanctuary. It is up to you to decide. Uh, but I have to, to present the evidence and the facts. Now, you can find this uh, uh, whole article on my website with all the photographs from these uh, pictures. I just showed you with all the symbols and the subliminal images. And if you would like to help the website and help also the channel uh, survive, please join below as a member. And I will be uh, bringing also some perks for all the ones who are becoming members uh, on the channel in the following few uh, weeks. So um, also the link you can find of this article below in the description and uh, please like and subscribe. So I suspect you soon and take care. Bye for now. Jehovah loved and cared for the Israelites as his treasured possession. But how did they respond to God's love? By worshiping false gods in the very temple that bore his name. They broke Jehovah's heart and brought reproach upon his name. Why did Israel sink so low? What can we learn from Ezekiel's prophecy about Jerusalem's destruction? Those questions are answered in section two of the book, Pure Worship of Jehovah, Restored at Last. This section is based on Ezekiel 5.11 and is entitled, It Was My Sanctuary That You Defiled. The first chapter of this section focuses on apostate Judah's spiritual and moral decline. Ezekiel knew the Mosaic Law well. He knew what was involved in giving Jehovah pure worship. But he saw things happening at the temple in Jerusalem that would shock any faithful worshiper of Jehovah. Turn, please, to Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 9, and read along with me. He said to me, Go in and see the evil detestable things that they are doing here. This passage sets the scene for chapter 5, See the evil, detestable things that they are doing. As you study this chapter, look for the answers to the following questions. What does Jehovah rightly expect of His worshipers, and how can you live up to His expectation? In what ways did the Israelites become spiritually unclean? But how can you keep spiritually clean? And why are you determined to stay morally clean? As you consider this material, ask yourself, what temptations must I resist if I'm to remain spiritually clean? Please be assured that Jehovah will give you the strength you need to reject any temptation or to overcome any unclean habit. Only if we remain clean can we give Jehovah what He deserves, our pure worship. <music>